Joining us now is Yuri Vitrenko. He's the CEO of Ukraine's largest oil and gas company, Naftogas. So fantastic to have you on the show with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We clearly have much to discuss, but I just wanted to start by asking you, I know you have over 50,000 employees. You're, you're a father, you're a husband. How concerned are people? How afraid are you for, for your family at this moment? We are concerned, but we're not afraid uh, because uh, uh, we understand that uh, Russia invaded Ukraine eight years ago. Uh, we have been living uh, under this uh, very concrete risk of further invasions uh, since then. But at the same time, at the moment, uh, uh, we cannot see enough signs of an imminent uh, attack. So we believe that uh, despite all the risks, uh, uh, it's more like a panic that is hurting Ukraine at the moment than the real imminent threat, uh, threat of um, further invasion. You also made some comments recently that I wanted to ask you about, which is that people shouldn't panic, that Russia can utilize that kind of instability and, and insecurity within Ukraine, even perhaps to suggest a different leader for Ukraine, a different president, one that might have sympathies or greater sympathies towards Russia. Do you see that as perhaps a greater risk? Yes, exactly. Because uh, this panic uh, hurts Ukraine economically. Uh, and that's what uh, Putin wants. Uh, he wants some economic problems for Ukraine. So then it's easier to uh, overthrow uh, the government. And then um, he would have a puppet government that would legitimize uh, uh, Russian uh, control and Russian troops uh, here in Ukraine. So that's why it's important to be strong and not to let it happen. There are other potential leverage points, too. We spoke to the head of the IEA last week, and he said that Russia is deliberately restricting supplies of gas to Europe beyond the contracted amount. They could provide more, and they aren't. They've de facto weaponized the supply of energy. Um, you've been concerned about this for a long time and have been warning about this. Do you think this justifies your concern over the certification of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline? Yes, I don't want to say I told you so, but that's exactly what we have been telling uh, the US government, the German governments uh, for quite a while. Uh, uh, Putin used gas as a weapon even before the joint statement of the US and German government. But after the statement, uh, he started to do it even more intensively and into the face uh, of, of the entire world. So uh, they uh, decreased the supplies of gas, uh, they blackmailed Moldova, uh, they scared off some uh, ships in the Black Sea that were doing some uh, seismic studies for us to produce more of Ukrainian gas. So they are using gas as a weapon as we speak. And then, of, of course, uh, something that needs some reaction uh, from the West. You might not be able to say, uh, I told you so, so to the, uh, the United States, because I think they share your concerns and have, and have voiced that. But you could perhaps say, I told you so to the German government. What is the new German government saying to you and what assurances are they providing? Currently, they are using this benefit of being a, a new government because uh, I was telling the previous government. Uh, but um, again, their new government is not that new any longer. So that's why they also need to make this decision. They need to decide if they are with the free world or they want to collaborate with Putin and with Russia in, their, in his fight with the free world. So in this particular case, uh, uh, we do believe and we're telling them that they should uh, uh, punish Russia for using gas as a weapon. They also they should also uh, prevent Nord Stream 2 and Gazprom in general to be above the rules in Europe because Nord Stream 2, for example, this uh, project is not compliant with European rules at the moment. That's why it, it cannot become uh, operating. So it's a moment of truth uh, for the German government, for the new German government, to show that they are with the free world and they uh, deserve to be uh, one of the leaders of the uh, United Europe. You could argue it costs them and it costs the German public, if, if others in Europe as well, not to certify this, but arguably it, it hurts Ukraine if they do. You've also said the certification of this is effectively a green light for Russia to launch a full-scale military aggression. I'm quoting you. What do you mean by that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Putin, the, his plan was to um, build Nord Stream 2, then to move all the transit flows from Ukraine to Nord Stream 2, and then it would be easier for uh, Russia uh, to further invade Ukraine without any consequences on energy trade with Europe. 
And then he hoped, and probably he still hopes, that, uh, again, European politicians will express some deep concerns, but these deep concerns won't stop Russian tanks. So basically, he will be able to get away with this uh, uh, further invasion. That was his plan. And uh, luckily, Nord Stream 2 uh, is not operating. And that's why if uh, Russia further invades Ukraine, uh, it would affect energy trade with Europe, uh, and it would cause more than just deep concerns from uh, European politicians. Uh, Putin uh, probably understands it. You know, it's interesting, you, you, your earlier point about complying with EU law as well. I mean, part of this involves uh, providing Europeans with greater choice, perhaps, over where they get their gas. Do, do you provide a viable alternative? Yes, of course. The Ukrainian gas transmission system is much bigger than Nord Stream 2. It's currently underutilized. Uh, so we have uh, even free capacity, like two times bigger than the whole capacity of Nord Stream 2. Uh, also, it's not that we want some kind of privileges. Uh, we say that uh, there are European rules. These rules are about a level playing field, some fair competition, and uh, off-takers should be given a, a chance to decide them tell, as themselves if they want, even if they buy Russian gas, if they want to bring this Russian gas uh, to Europe through Ukraine or through any other pipeline. And by the way, uh, what we are saying, that uh, maybe somebody hopes that Nord Stream 2 will help uh, um, the market uh, in the uh, short term bringing more gas. First of all, it's not the case, because Putin is also demanding long-term contracts, new uh, commitments from Europe uh, to buy more gas from Russia. And it really is against the Green Deal agenda of the European Union, decarbonization uh, initiatives. But at the same time, it just shows that Putin wants uh, Europe to be even more dependent uh, on Russian gas supplies. And if they're even more dominant, then they would further abuse uh, the market, abuse their dominance to the detriment of consumers. So consumers will suffer. That's why nobody should have these illusions that projects like Nord Stream 2, uh, Gazprom above the rule uh, of law in Europe, is somehow beneficial to Europe. That's a very wrong um, idea. You have um, experience in dealing with Putin directly. You battled with him over gas transit contracts. I, I vividly remember. Um, how do you meet Vladimir Putin as an equal in these negotiations? What does the West need to be prepared to do in your mind? And are they doing enough today? You rightly pointed out that we had this successful experience uh, uh, when we made Putin pay uh, uh, $3 billion under the decision of the Stockholm arbitration that we won. It was the largest uh, commercial arbitration in the world. Uh, they claimed over $100 uh, billion and they lost. Uh, and we also made him sign this new transit contract. And uh, a successful uh, re or recipe for success uh, when you're negotiating uh, with Putin is to be able to confront him, to be able to say no, to have uh, other options. Uh, so only then you have, uh, as many other negotiations, uh, um, you can have uh, a proper and positive result of such negotiations. Yeah, don't get and back that's why to uh, the West should not be. Uh, yes, exactly. And the West should not be afraid to confront Putin to show its strengths. And I pers I'm personally sure that the West is much stronger than Russia at the moment, economically and even military-wise. So the free world should not be afraid to show its strengths. Yuri, great to chat to you. Come back and talk to us soon, please. Yuri Vitrenko there, the CEO of Naftogas. We'll speak soon.